Welcome to the Operatory Podcast, a podcast about burying the dinosaurs in dentistry. Moving past outdated technology and procedures to find a better way. I am super excited today because I have on a very special guest, Rolanda Mayo uh, from Zyrus, formerly known as the VP of Marketing and Sales, but Rolando, you have a new title, which I'm super excited about. You are the Grand Puba of Engagement. So thanks for being on the podcast, man. I really, really appreciate it. And thank you for having me, uh, Dr. Brian. This is uh, fantastic. It's great. Looking well, forward to discussion. you know, we've known each other from trade shows mainly, and you're just always such a positive, uh, just great energy spirit in the, in, in, at the trade shows, which is not, it's not always positive, uh, energy around trade shows. So, uh, I'd love to hear, cause I know right now we're kind of in an unprecedented time. Uh, it's expected in the next hour in Minnesota that the governor is going to lock down all non-essential businesses. So I will not be in my office where I'm in right now, starting Monday, it sounds like for the indefinite, for an indefinite period of time. And so, uh, what's, what's your take on this situation, man? First of all, I, I, I it, it, it's amazing that we go through this, uh, but I'm, I'm taking a positive or a more of an optimistic view in that, like everything that we go through in life, we're going to get through this. It's just a matter of figuring out how. So you, you and I, we spoke briefly before, and I wanted to share something with you because in, in looking at what's happening and looking at everything that's being kicked out there, there is so much, so much uh, information, speculation, people are like, you know, uh, guessing and all that type of stuff. And there's a little exercise that helps me keep myself in sane, uh, sane not insane. <laughs> and it also, uh, it's something that I've shared with my team and I'd like to share it with you. Is that cool? Oh, absolutely. Yes. Thanks. So, so, um, if you would bear with me for the next several minutes, I'm going to ask you a couple of questions and then the, the context of it will come through. It's more about, a way of thinking as opposed to, you know, having to make the best answer or, or try to, you know, there's no right or wrong. And it starts like this. I'll, I'll, day, I'll, I'll probably find a wrong answer, though, just for you. No. <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> well, first of all, Grand Puba, if you look at that, my new title, as the Grand Puba, Ooh. only, only people of, of our maturity will understand that. <laughs> I've, I've shared that with with other newer members, younger members of our team, and, and I found that they don't know who that is. So I'll be curious to see if, if uh, as, as, you, as anyone listening to this um, can, can figure out where that came from. But anyway, so getting to this. Every day, every day, regardless of our education, regardless of our role, regardless of the, the experience we have, the title that we have, you know, who we work with, where we work, we all do this. Literally, literally hundreds of times a day. And, you know, I, I'll ask that question, and, and we, we kind of went into this. And the typical answer I get is, you know, we think. You have to think to do this. We, we communicate. You have to communicate to do this. We, we breathe. We, we blink. Yeah, you have to do all of those things to do this. So then as people think more, it starts getting to more complex things like, oh, we plan. Well, you have to do this to plan. And sometimes when you plan this, you have to plan to do this. And what happens a lot of times is people, um, we, not people, we all tend to complexify things. And as, as you're going through the exercise, you know, you're, you're thinking, wait a minute, what do we do literally hundreds of times a day? Usually it'll take, you know, maybe a dozen guesses and I'll finally say, here's what it is. Are you ready? Absolutely. We, yes. <laughs> we solve Problem. And the, the interesting part about that is it's so simple, but it's also complex. And every time I say, folks, we solve problems, people go, oh, I knew it was something simple. But it, when you think about it, you wake up in the morning and the first thing you got to solve is what am I going to wear? Or you're driving to work or you get to work and you're presented with situations that you have to solve. And part of that is a function of prioritizing. And part of that is also the process of, of kind of thinking through what needs to be done. So part two of this, of this kind of paradigm shift in thinking, what is the key to solving problems? So I asked that question as a follow-on. 
and the typical answers I get are things like, oh, you got you got a plan. Well, yeah, if you're planning, are you actually solving the problem? And the answer is no. Oh, I know what it is. You have to, you have to uh, research. Well, research is part of the answer. But when you look at researching, are you solving the problem? No. And then there, you know, you've got to talk to people. Some people say, oh, I know what it is. You have to, you have to put a team together. And, and a lot of the answers are very operational in, in context. But when you think about it, the key to solving problems is as simple as the idea of solving a problem. And it's a three-letter word. It's hack. You have to do something. All the planning, all the research, all the dialogue, all the things that a team will do in looking at the problem won't solve it unless the team actually acts, if there's something actionable about it. And the reason is this. When you act, you learn. If, if you come up with the greatest strategy of the plan and it's and you, it's never executed, you never learn, and, and, and it's virtually impossible to determine if that's going to solve that problem. So part three, and then I'd like to talk to you about this and how it applies to what's happening today. Part three is this. So one, solve problems. Prioritize, figure out which one's the most important. Two, you got to act. So now the final part is uh, of this three-legged stool is what should you only act on? Now, this is the one that kind of stymies a lot of people because they're like, well, what do you mean? you got to act on a plan. Well, yeah, if, if you, you, you have a plan, can you act on the plan? If, do you know that the plan's going to work? Actually, no. And then also, what do, you, what do you use to generate that plan? And it gets stuck there. Or, you know what? Act on, act on gut. And I say now, my feedback about acting on gut or even guessing is you got to be careful because when you're when you're acting on a guess or, or gut, you're kind of speculating. And the issue that happens is when you speculate, you don't know for sure whether or not what you're speculating on is real. So what ends up happening is right there you're in a situation where you, you, you're not confident. So what should you only act on? And the answer that I give everybody is this: only act on what you know. And the reason that's important is you can do something with what you know. You can't do anything with what you don't know. Last part, and it's, it's, it's what everyone says, so what do you do with what you don't know? Well, the, the simple answer is go find out. And then when or if you discover information after you find out and it's material to what you're doing, change what you're doing. But if it's not, don't dismiss it. Put it to the side because it may become material later on. And it may be the key piece that's missing. If, if, if you discover something about what you don't know and you dismiss it, what happens then is you're in a situation where this key piece of information may be critical or, or paramount to what you're doing and you, you're forgotten. So it's funny. You get a team together, and I, we're kind of seeing this right now, and any time you know, crazy things happen. People come in and go, holy cow, look what's going on. What's going on? I don't know. Well, I don't know. I don't know. And we tend to focus on what you don't know. You know, think back to your team when you have a, when you have a situation and, and, you know, people are stressed and people are trying to figure out what's going on. They'll tend to grab onto anything. And the key is to validate, hold on, do we know that or not? Because if we don't know that, write it down. We'll go find out. But what do we do? Because we can actually act on what we know. We can't act on what we don't know. How was that? It was great. And, you know, I, I want to emphasize a point right now is that we scheduled this podcast a month ago before coronavirus hit. It feels like three and a half years ago at this point to me, <laughs> right? Yeah, the world's very different than when we scheduled this podcast. And 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 we kind of discussed what the content was going to be. And you went and we and you, you talked about this. And I, I thought it was fantastic. And it's almost eerily apropos today, right, with, with the, what's going on in the world. Because... I think what you went through, I was processing totally differently a month ago than I, than I would today based on what's yeah. going on in the world, right? Uh, f focusing on acting on fact or on what you know to be true versus what you don't know to be true. And there is so much that's not known that we can't know right now that it's producing tons of anxiety and having people, uh, I think, not act, which to me is a big problem. You know, I look at people saying things like, oh, it's time to catch up on Netflix or, or 
uh, you know, they want to like play more video games or, or just like, just hang around. Oh boy, I can, now I can clean out my closet. And I, I'm kind of doing the opposite. Uh, I'm telling everybody now is the time to work harder than you ever have because we are going to be on the other side of this and the world's going to look different and we need to plan for that. You so hit it on the nose. It's it's amazing because when I've been talking to quite a few people and I always have this, hold on, hold on. Do we know that? No, do we know that? So here's the thing, put it to the side. Don't dismiss it because you got to find that out. But you hit it on the nose. People are speculating on speculation. And when they're speculating on speculation, think about it. We're guessing on a guess, which puts us, whatever, exponentially further from the truth as possible. And it further increases anxiety. It starts making us panic. And when you think about this, when anxiety is high, you're emotional. When you're emotional, what? Adrenaline is pumping in your system and, and your blood is going in your muscles. This should go into fight or flight and you're not making good decisions. And, the blood's not and, going to your brain, right? Brain, exactly. And, and you're, you're, you become so whacked out about stuff. And, and you know, I'm, and I hate to bring it up, but I'm going to. I still don't understand the toilet paper thing, but we're not going to go there. And it's that, kind of, it's that kind of mindset because people freak out. And then they, they're, they settle down. I tell everyone, settle down. Your adrenaline goes down. Okay, hold on. Let's look at what we know. And to your point, this is going to pass. And it will pass. It may take some time. And the key is to weather that, is to figure out, based on what you know, how to get through until it does. Because when it does pass, what's going to happen is there is going to be a lot that's going to need to be done. And if people haven't thought about that because of the, I'm going to use the word panic or the stress or the anxiety of the unknown, then what ends up happening is they get caught or are blindsided on on situations and all that and you know i i want to my heart goes out to 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 the uh, dental practices and all the people there we have a lot of really really good friends in that and i've spoken to quite a few and the 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 decision to to have to close down the decision i mean california we're now you know it's no one's allowed out and all that type of stuff and get it and we want we want to do our job we want to keep people safe it's not necessarily about us but the, the idea of what you said, work harder now, figure out, understood, get things in place so that you're safe, people are taken care of. But then now, beyond sitting there and stewing about the craziness, obviously, you know, if you want to go hang out for a little bit or drink an entire bottle of wine and then, you know, roll around naked in the woods, hey, more power to you. As long as you keep your social distance. <laughs> I, I didn't know where but, you're going with there, and it went worse than I think I thought it would be. Oh, going. <laughs> no, no, but it's it's do do what you need to do for yourself, but oh, then yeah. come back, refocus, balance, and then you know, hit, be mindful that we are going to get past this, and like you said, work hard now just to figure that out, and focus on what you know because you can act on what you know. I, I also want to point out uh, a couple things because. Having you on the podcast today is also very apropos because there are some things that you can do now, even if you're like, our office is shut down except for emergency care. And so there's some things like, like our, our teledentistry application is just going bazonkers with an opera DDS because everybody now understands the need to, to, to triage remotely and things like that. But another tool that is that, that you can have in your, ar- your ar- armamentarium in the dental practice, the isolate is is great for these types of times because you may need to be seeing patients without an assistant. Also, the aerosols are going to be more contained using the isolation system. And I know that you, you're not really in sales. Uh, I mean, I think Isolite does such a good job recognizing that, look, your product sells itself. And so it's more about getting uh, people engaged and, and educated on, on kind of how to produce dentistry well because that leads them to your product but i if you could touch a little bit on how the isolite can help because the people are hurting today right and they they need tools like the isolite so if if you could for for our audience that doesn't understand kind of how they can leverage an isolite in their practice today when they're going through this time frame uh if you could highlight that i'd appreciate it yeah no first of all thank you for asking and, and really appreciate that I've been told by many of the clinicians that we work with that our system, the Isolite, regardless of which system you have, the mouthpiece system, 
not only do they enable the clinicians to work by themselves, especially now if they're shorthanded or you know, emergency procedures, you're not working with the full staff, but it is connected to a high VAC. And because, simply because of that, it is constantly and very, very powerfully evacuating inside the oral cavity. So when it comes to things like spatter, when it comes to things like fluid, when it comes to things, even aerosols, you know, when you think about the fact that it's evacuating so much, it, it actually helps. What's really important to understand and, and what, what I've been told is that when you look at the way isolate works and the what it enables clinicians to do, once it's placed inside the mouth, not only does the patient settle, but the clinician, the dentist, is, is able to do their work much faster. So their exposure or the time that it's taking them to actually do procedure is less because right now it's only emergency procedures these emergency procedures are probably going to be a lot more complex than standard cases in which case the clinicians the dentists need to know doctors need to know specifically or be able to identify diagnose and then quickly treat the issue that the patient is dealing with in the most effective and efficient way and um, you know for the past what, 18 years or so, we've been told or isolate enables them to cut the amount of time dramatically, not because the patient's more comfortable, but because the entire environment is a lot more controlled. So yeah, it's it's definitely something to consider and and you know, one of the things we are doing our part to make sure that we're not we're keeping our customers safe, keeping our, our people safe, keeping our team safe. So we're fully remote, but we have a, a skeleton team and we, we do have quite a few people who are looking and, and ordering things because they want to use the system, and we are still shipping. So we're going to keep doing that until you know until otherwise. Because last thing we want to do is not have something that people can use or told us are so powerful for their use and not be able to get. Well, I, I use the isolate in my practices, you know, and I, uh, I, I I would I disagree with one thing you said. Was it that you said you slipped in there that not just like patient comfort? Because I believe that the ice light provides a ton of patient comfort. Uh, as you know, the listeners of our podcast know, I, it's, for me, it's all about the patient perspective, enhancing the patient experience. And I think the ice light does that beautifully. I also, sort of on theme with this podcast, we don't know when we're going to be on the other side of this, of this epidemic, pandemic. We don't know. What it's going, to, what the world's going to look like. But what I do know to be true is that the concerns about viral uh, splatter, you know, the, the 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 aerosols in our air is going to be much higher after this than before. And I think that uh, people are going to recognize the need for uh, good isolation and good uh, good infection control protocol and patient comfort that would lead them directly to the isolate. And so, if right now, if you haven't gotten on board, uh, it would be a good time to get on board and, and, and get used to it before the uh, things calm down and we're probably all going to be incredibly busy. So where can, where can people go to to find out more about the Isolite? Well, just go to www.zyrisvyris.com and all the information is there. And, you know, we've had, we have an 800 number for Zyrus and that, that um, is, we, we are, operating and working full-time throughout this entire process so be reassured but you know it's it, um, as far as uh, any support or any of that type of stuff our entire team is online uh, we're, we, we've been using a video conference uh, program called zoom which is kick butt and it's been very helpful and what's kind of nice is when people go through their training now it's it's uh it's they actually have the time and, and by the way i also want to note one thing here Education, especially now because there's a little bit of downtime, one of the things that I've heard a lot of people doing and I'm encouraging them is to go online and take the time to educate yourself around the things that you, quote unquote, didn't have time to do before. Uh, you, you've started a new, um, a new uh, online uh, educational uh, website. Is that correct? I did, That's yeah. Right. Upgrade Dental, UpgradeDental.com, and it's about yeah. – Technology selection and implementation, what you should buy, when. Uh, we're going yeah. to be having a bunch of modules about uh, about about this crisis, right? Because I think that people need tools now, and I'm doing a ton of content around this that will, that will live yeah, I mean, there. Yeah, the, the education, 
in addition to making sure we serve our customers and, and our clients, our team, one of the things I'm encouraging everybody to do is get online. Upgrade Dental is a is a wonderful forum for that, but there are also other, and there are also Tons. other educational platforms that you can get to where you can really brush up on, especially now, on all the things that, to your point, we will have to be dealing with when we get past this. So, yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. And, and again, yeah, the, the key is not to get freaked out, not to start speculating on what you don't know and then getting all wound up about what you don't know because we tend to, you know, think the worst. It, it, it's to sit down and say, hold on, what do I know? What can I act on now? Okay, based on that, what do I have to validate? Now that I've gotten this new information, how do I move forward as opposed to, well, I bet you if, then I'll bet you then, which is just kind of crazy because then we're guessing on guessing. Well, thank you very much for your time and your insight. And I've got to say, I, 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 you are my first grand puma on this podcast. <laughs> and I, I strive someday to be a mediocre puma. You know, I think, I think that would be, that would be good oh. enough for me. So thank you very much, oh. uh, Rolando. I appreciate it. Yeah. And I really appreciate it. I, I, I love listening to your podcast. Uh, you got me turned them on. You got me turned on to them just recently here. And I'm like, holy cow. There's some awesome stuff in here, and and the folks that you bring on, you know, the, the content that you you the stuff that you cover is just awesome. Oh, Thank thanks. You for that. I, I almost for said me and, I almost said it's infectious, but that would be not. I don't. I think it's oh, too soon. Boom. <laughs> 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 well, thanks again, sir. Appreciate it. Yeah, and thank you, and please be safe, and I look forward to it. And if you have any questions, please let me know. Great. It's uh, www.zyris.com.